Hey guys, how are you? Isaac Hyman, High Flyer Digital here. Welcome to another webinar that we're hosting right now, talking about one of the topics that a lot of e-commerce brands are struggling with this year, and that is post-purchase, right? One of the best ways to beat a recession is retention, as not just I'm saying, but what I'm learning from the top brands as well, that is their highest priority right now. It's all about retention, keeping your customers for a long time. And the best way to do that is right when they're about to drop off, right at that moment, which is in that post-purchase stage. They bought one time or they bought multiple times. Really, we're going to focus a little bit on the one-time buyers, though the strategy is the same. But how do you get them to stick around for a long time? What is the, what is the magic behind it? What are the top brands doing? How do you keep customers there for, you know, and build that relationship with them in perpetuity? And how to never lose them again um, and never, ever have to worry about your profits, your revenues, and just create that profitable, predictable, sustainable revenue stream for your business. So it's super important that you get the post-purchase playbook right and correct. Having done this for the top brands, I know that I'm going to zero in on about four phases that you need to excel in. And you excel in those four phases, your business will change. Guaranteed. I'm going to show you proof of that. So let's jump right in. I'm going to boost up the playbook now and we'll get started. Okay. So... My mission, really our mission in the next 45 minutes is to achieve the following. I'm going to show you the exact post-purchase strategy that the top 1% use, that I've used at the top brands. We're talking nine-figure, 10-figure brands, billion-dollar brands, unicorns as, the, as, they, as they call it, right? Um, and it just also works for the six-figure brands, the seven-figure brands as well. It works just as well. But I've used it at the top brands. I've tested it for you. I've rolled it out. I know exactly how to make it happen for your business, and I'm going to give you the playbook right now. So my mission is going to show you this exact framework that I've used to generate thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of repeat customers and generate millions in profits, not just revenue. You see a quick screenshot down there below of a, of a client we worked with, and you know the revenue potential is incredible. So I'm going to give you that exact framework. I'll go into that case study a little bit later, but the importance of it is that it's just a fantastic way to run out your retention strategy. It's the first, first step. And so if you're on this webinar, you must be one of the following types of people. Right? If you're watching this either on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, I think we're going live in multiple locations right now. If You must be really, truly serious about building a better customer relationship. And most of the, most of the brands out there aren't, right? 84% of brands don't even think about building a better customer relationship. It's just not something they're focused on, right? It's more along the lines of like, hey, how do I make money right now? How do I get revenue quickly? And they're not focused on the long-term relationship. You are probably also a brand who wants to learn how the top 1% think and bring those strategies to your business. Really important to learn from other people and get that mindset and bring it to your business as well. You may be an e-commerce shop that wants to break free from the hamster wheel of acquisition and actually make money, right? Why are we paying Google and Facebook money to bring people to your site and then paying them more money to get people back to your site. Why don't we focus on retaining them while they're there and buying? You're probably an action taker who doesn't just read about stuff that actually wants to do stuff and implement it, not just consume content, but actually take actionable um, actions, tactics to develop that better customer relationship. And you're probably a, either a DTC brand or a retailer or even a marketer who wants to, who just realizes that there's a lot of potential on your list right now that's probably untapped. You probably think to yourself, there's a better way, right? So you made the right choice. You're here, you're now, you're listening, and we're going to learn it together and focus on that one area that's probably the most pivotal point of your e-commerce relationship. By the end of this webinar, okay, I'm going to make some promises to you. By the end of this webinar, you will be able to, one, level the playing field with your competition, and then level up. Two, you'll be able to create an unbreakable relationship with your customers that turns those one-time buyers into lifetime buyers. And three, you will unlock a profitable, predictable, sustainable revenue stream from every customer. Those are my three promises that at the end of this webinar, we're going to kind of take it away and say, wow, did I come away with some massive value? Yeah, those are the three areas you're going to know exactly how to roll out. And you'll be better prepared to start either rolling out yourself or putting together a plan to have someone roll it out for you. 
right? That's going to be the main takeaway. And again, there's another screenshot right there of a case study where I'm going to show you exactly why purse purchase helped drive those, those numbers. Okay, we'll go a little deeper into that. And of course, if you stay to the end, which you really should be staying, you should be dedicating this 45 minutes of your lunch break or 45 minutes of your time to learning the post-purchase strategies of the top brands. If you stay to the end, I'm going to give away a free digital copy of my new book, The Ultimate E-Commerce Email and SMS Playbook. See it right there. There it is. Amazing book. 330 pages worth of value. Okay. Really spent a lot of time and energy in creating that book because it's so important for brands like you to compete to win. Right. I'm going to give it to you. You can also email me at Isaac at highflyerdigital.com. I will send you out a hard copy. I'm still waiting on a restock for some every like quarter. I get sold out of the ones I have. I got to get more from Amazon. So you can buy a Kindle version on Amazon. Soon you'll have the audio book. And again, if you're really serious about growing revenue and beating the recession and keeping your customers loyal, dedicate the time to move away all your distractions. You know, keep that code of honor, phones off text off. I have my phone buzzing in the back because we just sent an email out promoting the webinar again um, to everyone who signed up. We probably had the most signups out of out of any of the webinars we had before. This is probably the most popular one. So I'm putting my phone away. No buzzing, no nothing, no distractions. This is an important one, right? So turn off your cell phone, snooze your social media, and just focus on the core pillars of the secret strategies of the top 1%. So a little bit of background, let me make sure I didn't skip. Yeah, a little bit about me and uh, in High Flyer Digital. I myself was, I've been on your side of the table, okay? I've been the director of CRM of the top 1%. I just told you I wrote the book on email and SMS for e-commerce brands. I've sent over a billion emails annually, still do, directly attributing to about 300 million in revenue. That's just numbers. That's just high numbers. It's just a lot. But the goal is that, you know, we send more emails we sent, we generate more money while sending fewer emails. That's going to be the main takeaway that, that I always tell everyone. We've managed multi-million dollar email lists. We've been an award winner for best email performance at Blue Core Summit. You can see me winning an award down there and, and my team really. And then we've spoken at Etail, Post Funnel, other events. And we've worked with hundreds of brands and e-commerce stores internationally. And like I said before, my, the main thing is that I've been on your side of the table. I know what you're going through. And I'm going to tell you a little story about that. Okay. I struggled with retention just like you. Okay. I, I, I struggled with kind of getting the buy in and getting the people to get on board with the fact that it's not just about selling all the time because it's selling breaks relationships, education content builds relationships. So it's not just about kind of getting the next numbers and hitting the next revenue goals and hitting, you know, batch of blasting your email list. It's, it's just not. It's about building a better customer relationship. But every brand I worked for was always about getting top line revenue. Get me top line revenue, right? More revenue, more revenue. How can we make more, okay? One boss I had said, hey, send more card abandoned emails. That was their strategy. That was a terrible strategy. Um, it doesn't, I mean, it's a tactic, right? Another one said, just send more emails in general. So what happened was when we did that, the list was exhausted. We were sending maybe three, four emails a day. I still see from some of the top brands out there, three, four emails a day between daily deals and campaigns and automations. It's just not cohesive. And that magic, they just exhaust the list, right? So there's nothing left to your email list after you do that. And I just deferred also, I think most of the people, you know, listening to this webinar right now, if you're a brand or a, you know, direct to consumer, you, know, you, you defer to, to your customer service, you defer to people telling you, hey, merchandisers are saying you should do it this way, customer service saying do it this way, your chief technology officer saying do it another way. You're deferring to so many different teams that you lose out the magic, you lose out the potential. So I had that epiphany. At a moment, I said, when I had the opportunity to jump it and seize control of it, I said, you know what? There's a better way. Okay. So that's the better way. The better way happened when I realized there's, you need segmentation and personalization. And that's how you build a better customer relationship. That's the moment where you realize there's a lot of potential on my email and SMS list. And if I just tap into that personalization and segment out and find the right person, right message, right time, repeat it, I will unlock the true lifetime value of my list and build a better customer relationship. If I could reach the customer behind the email, you, the brand 
and the customer will grow together. That's where the money happens. That's where the revenue happens. That's where the profits happen. That's where the relationship is long-term, right? So that's really what it comes down to. So I had that epiphany. I had this, those moments and challenges where I'm like, oh, I'm just not getting enough from my list, but probably a lot of potential there. It comes down to saying segmentation, personalization, build a better customer relationship. Okay, and that's my framework here. My framework, if you see at the bottom, right person, right message, right time, repeat, right person, right message, right time, repeat. It's all about segmentation, personalization, automating it, and then multiplying it for different products and different customer cohorts. And for that, I was able to grow an email program from 45 million to 75 million in about eight months while sending 11% fewer emails. That's just one example. I have multiple examples like that. And since then, I've been able to work with seven to 10 figure e-commerce brands on their retention. That is the most important takeaway. So again, I've been in your shoes. I know exactly what you're going through. I've had the same challenges and I had the epiphany moment where I said, there's a better way to do it. And I would want to be treated on a customer's email list, on a brand's email list, the same way um, I would I would want to be on your list to be treated the same way that I would treat others, right? That's kind of the, uh, the mindset behind it. Just another quick uh, story, a background about High Flyer Digital. Again, don't want to talk too much about what we do, but it's important to understand where, the, where our mindset is because that's the mindset I want to share with you. We exist to help brands unlock the, you know, build better customer relationships, which unlock more revenue and profits. So if you ask us, we're an email and SMS agency. Well, that's what we do. What, why we do it is because it's all about the relationship. We want to bring that relationship building skills to your brand because you have relationships that need to be unlocked from your list. We do that by segmenting and personalizing and connecting with the customers on a one-to-one -one level, right? We want to reach the person behind the inbox, behind the phone. That's our goal. We connect to that person, we could write our own ticket. How do we do that? We do that by leveraging the most intimate form of communication with the customers that they've elected to give us, which is their email and SMS. That is the most intimate form of communication. So our goal is to build a relationship with the person behind it because they gave it to us. They have some trust. They want to see what we can do. And that's important. Our mission if you were to ask me what my five-year goal is and what my maybe 10-year goal is, our mission is to help the small yet scaling e-commerce brand level the playing field with the top 1% by, sh by sharing the retention strategies of the top brands with you. That's my goal. I want to share the top strategies out there so you can have that same experience and build the same relationship with your customers. You should see I have a whole graph that shows the amount of top 1% brands. It's very, very small, but they control 90% of the market. I want you guys to compete to win and get to the next milestone you're trying to aim for this year. The outcome is that our clients unlock the true value of their list, of their customers, and then create profitable, predictable, and sustainable revenue streams 24-7, 365. You can sleep well at night knowing you're paying your bills, you're growing your business, it's automated and personalized. That's the key part. So that's a little bit about what we do and kind of that's our story that's my background that's my epiphany that's my challenges it's all been there i've all had the same things you've gone through and i created an agency that does it better because it's all about the relationship so let's now step away from what i was talking about the high flyer digital mindset and myself i want to talk about you and the question you need to ask yourself right now as we go into our post purchase playbook the super important post purchase playbook right here is why are my customers leaving, right? You have Tula's dad over there, big fan of my Big Fat Greek Wedding. You have the dad there saying, why do you want to leave me, right? Why are your customers leaving? That's the question we should ask ourselves, number one. No, first, above all. So let's get into the data right now. 74% of customers are one and done. They're one-time buyers. They don't repeat. 80% of those one-time buyers are gained at a discount. And when you combine it with free shipping, returns, rewards, and paid media, there's very little profit, very little profit left, right? It's almost like a loss leader, right? You don't, you need to kind of get it, get that customer in, and then maybe you try to get them to repeat. But look at that gap. 74% are, are one-time one buyers. That means three out of four are gone once you gain them. And anyone will try something at least once. Brands just spend more time on acquisition than they do on retention. I get it. It's appealing. You want to see your brand out there. You want to, you got to attract new customers. I'm not saying that's that's evil or wrong, but 80-20 rule. 80% of your revenue comes from 20% of their customers. 
Is that true for every single type of business? Maybe it's 85, 15, maybe it's 25, 75. But the point is that majority of your revenue, of your revenue comes from your best customers. So you want to tap into that and grow that one-time buyer into a repeat customer. The funnel approach, the funnels make Google and Facebook rich. Okay, when you think about a funnel, I'm going to get to that in a second, but the funnels that, that everyone tells you about, it just makes Google and Facebook rich because you're trying to attract new customers and they're not profitable. But the flywheel effect, which I'm going to go into, which is basically around the hourglass approach, which I'm going to talk to about, which is the whole webinar, with email and SMS, it makes you rich. It makes you profitable, right, and predictable. So our goal, create a profitable, predictable, and sustainable revenue stream 24-7, 365. So that's why 74% of customers are one and done. But let's get into the reason about why do customers leave, okay? Now, I have this great shot over there where it says, um, I think that's uh, Love is Blind. And it's a great show on Netflix. I watch it, you know, with my wife. It's, it's very entertaining. So you have this quote right here that says, when my fiance looks at me like this, I'm turning around, right? It's like you walk down the aisle and I think you're, getting, you're, you're about to decide if you say I do. Um, and then yeah, that's the surprise right there. Um, but there's also another one that says married at first sight, right? You come down the aisle, you're like, oh, wow, I didn't know who they were. And all of a sudden I see them and wow, I'm married to them. Anyway, the point of that is that your post-purchase handoff is terrible because you need to think of it that way. When marketing is celebrating a sale and they hand off the customer service, that's where the, that's where the fallout happens, right? So marketing needs to control that handoff a lot better. Think of it this way. I walked down the aisle, I, we entertained them, we gave them promises and commitments and free shipping and offers and discounts and rewards and all this amazing stuff. And we closed the deal. We got the sale. Marketing celebrates. They had an amazing, uh, amazing. We got, we got a deal in. Your email program is performing. But customer service doesn't have those same metrics. They don't necessarily care as much, right? They're just there to answer questions. The customer's experience, it falls apart because they have all these promises that may or may not be delivered on the customer service side. And it's not customer service's fault. It's the brand fault because marketing needs to be involved in everything, right? There's, that's why we have a chief customer officer. You surround the customer with all these marketing and service tactics. So that's really important. Your post-purchase handoff is probably lacking. Okay, I'm not saying it's horrible, but it's probably lacking. Number two, you're constantly in selling mode, right? You look at a customer as an open wallet and you're always like, you know what, let's sell. Again, another campaign to go out, another sale to go out, let's keep selling, right? That's, that's got to break away and say, let's focus on nurturing and educating first. You show little interest in helping customers achieve a goal. I'm not saying, again, this isn't necessarily you as a brand necessarily right now, but these are the reasons why customers will leave, right? You can see the leading causes of churn, poor onboarding, weak relationship building, poor customer service. And brands show little interest in helping customers achieve a goal. You may be hands off and afraid of build, to build a relationship, some brands just kind of step away and say, you know what? They close the deal. I'm not going to even touch them for the next 30 days. Okay. I don't want them to leave or unsubscribe, but that's, that's a gap. That's a miss. You're not being proactive enough to help and educate customers. You also may be just, may just be relying on tactics. You may hear from your ESPs or from other people out there, send a, send a upsell cross sell email and you want some more reviews, send a reviews email. Okay. We knew that. I knew that back in, when I was you know five years old. Whenever I was, had a lemonade stand and I was selling lemonade and I said, you know what? I'll sell them a cookie too for an extra 50 cents. We all know the upsell cross sell. This is not rocket science. What the gap is, is that that's a tactic. That's not a strategy, right? So we all know what that means. Send a reviews email. We have, we get it. We send an upsell cross sell. We have, we get it. Okay. Easy. No problem. What you want is a strategy though. So that's why it's falling apart. And if you want to go and look online, I think it's under highflydigital.com slash um, webinars. It's, I also have the top seven reasons why customers leave you for Amazon and your competitors, which is a major, major takeaway too. And the reasons for that is more value stacking. They're more convenient and they personalize a lot better than you do. So that's some of the reasons why customers will leave. And if you think about it, it's all these reasons could be part of your brand or they could be solvable. So our mission, our post-purchase goals from this webinar will be to 80-20 rule, focus on the 80% of the revenue that comes from 20% of your customers. We want more of the 20%. We want to capture as many as we can, close that gap between the one-time buyer and the two-time buyer. Because when you do, 
the jump from two to three and three to four is so much easier, right? You just need to close the gap between one and two. That's the biggest gap. Look at that graph. 74% one-time buyers, get them 15% are two-time buyers. That's a huge gap. But from two to three, it's 15 to five. Pretty good. We want to map out the full journey and know when to send certain emails and texts. Really important to know when the right time to send these messages. We want to rethink how to approach new customers and keep them coming back using this hourglass approach. We think outside of just email and SMS and think along the lines of retention and lifetime value and what does a customer expect when they, uh, when they get a package, right? Aim for long-term value goals, which is two-time, three-time buyers, high lifetime value, high AOV, while also making sure we hit short-term wins. Like a short-term win could be revenue, but a short-term win could be, hey, they joined another channel or, hey, they came visit us in store or they signed up for, our, um, you know, joined us, uh, subscribed on YouTube. And at the end of the day, we want to help create a profitable, predictable, sustainable revenue stream for your business 24-7, 365. Again, look at the bottom there. Low customer lifetime value when they buy once. It's inactive. It's not profitable. We want to get them over the hump to that 60% of active and profitable. And then last, lastly, high CLV, very proactive, very high value. That's our goals for this webinar. I think we can all agree those are some pretty lofty goals and they're not very hard to accomplish if you have the right mindset. So let's jump right to it. Secrets of the 1%, post-purchase e-commerce playbook. Let's get into the, the mindset. Let's get into the actual tactics, the strategy. I want to go high-level strategy and then bring it down to eye-level tactics. That's the post-purchase e-commerce playbook. Never lose a customer again using this approach. So I posted this graph on LinkedIn a couple days ago. And it just is very visually, under, you can visually understand what we're talking about here. Okay, the funnel approach for e-commerce, pretty bad experience. It's just good. People met, remember it. It's just a memorable way to look at acquiring new customers. But the funnel approach, and I'm going to use the, the blanket terms for it, awareness, interest, decision, action, and there's multiple terms for it. You could see here, once you get a customer, great. We all celebrate. We go off to find the next one, right? Typical. And a customer is left hanging. They're like, wow, they're falling down. There's a huge gap. There's nothing to collect them, nothing to grow them, nothing to nurture them. There's just a lot of missed trust that you promised them. And you got to break that. You got to live up to it. The hourglass approach takes that funnel and expands them, right? Think of it as like a, literally an hourglass. I used to have an hourglass here. I'm not sure where it is right now, but an hourglass, it collects the sand from the top. And then it bunches it all up into a community of sand at the very bottom. And all these people are there and everyone feels great and they're all part of the involved and they're just expanding on that trust they bought, had before, right? They found that you've lived up to your promises. You've given a lot of education, a lot of information. You've helped them achieve their goals. You've brought them into a community. You've helped them maximize their purchase on and on. Really important to know how that approach is very different than the funnel. It's literally a funnel upside down. Okay. So when you think of an hourglass approach, it's not like we're going to leave customers hanging or falling. We're going to help expand them, expand the relationship. And again, that's what we do. High Flyer Digital, build a better customer relationship. That's the magic behind it. And this is going to have, this is the first way to do it. I'm going to go through some examples here as well, and I gave this I gave this speech at Etail East a couple of years back, um, all about the post purchase hourglass. So I'm going to use an example of when I used to work at um, Arama again as a director of CRM. So I'm going to use a lot of the slides there, and you can see ex clear examples of how we ran it out and how it really performed really well. Um, so that's going to be so I'm going to take an example of more of the consumer electronics industry because that's where I definitely have the most expertise. Uh, consumer electronics is very easy to understand, right? It's also like we all know what an iPhone is. We all know what a tablet is, or a computer is, or a MacBook, right? We all know that stuff. So we can all relate to it. If we're talking about apparel or fitness, this also plays a role. And I have examples about how that post-purchase playbook runs really well for them. But to make it easier, I'm using an example of a consumer electronics brand. So let's dive into the post-purchase hourglass phases. There are four phases to focus on. As we said before, there's adoption, retention, expansion, and advocacy, okay? Let's break down what each one means. Adoption is the first step, right? Does it work? Do I have everything I need? 
to be successful with the product I bought. We're not talking about upsell. We're not talking about cross sell. We're not talking about anything except for does it work? Do I have everything? Do I have my expectations matched that I thought when I bought the product? That's the first phase. You got to excel in that phase first. The next phase, after you excel in the adoption phase, is retention. Did my brand provide value? Do I have enough value um, that trumps every other brand out there? Can I stay? Can my, can my customers stay within my ecosystem and not go out on YouTube or some other brand out there to kind of learn something new? How do I create that value and hold on to them? Right? It transcends away from product and goes into brand. The next phase is expansion phase, where after you've retained it, you've retained the customer and shown the true value from them, you expand them. Now, hey, can my product do even more? It's interesting. Within technology, um, a lot of different products, most customers only adopt 20% of the product, the technology. There's so much you could do with a camera. There's so much you could do with a MacBook. There's so many things. I found out on my iPhone, I can track my AirPods you know, by just going near it. I had no clue about that. So I think that was really fascinating to know. Can I do even more? So what can my brand, what can I do to accessorize the purchase this customer made? And then the final stage is advocacy, right? Once you've proven that you've delivered the product, you've delivered the value, you've helped the customer maximize their purchase, then they will leave a review, right? That's when you say, hey, share your experience with others, bring your friends, tell the world about us. That's the final stage, okay? So four phases we need to excel in. Adoption, retention, expansion, advocacy. I usually am very good at acronyms. I was going to call this one Area 51 because Area, A-R-E-A. But uh, usually High Fly Digital has some good acronyms, but I'm not going to do it this time. Those are the four phases you need to excel in right here. Let's dive into the first phase, adoption. Okay, Adoption phase is the first touch the customer receives from you. Most brands let this fall into the purview of customer service. And that's that's important, don't get me wrong, but if marketing can have a control over it and be involved with customer service on making sure the experience is top notch, that's probably best. So first phase is adoption. So you need to ask yourself, have you met your customer's expectations after their purchase? And have you helped the customer unlock the value immediately from their purchase? And are you honoring and over-delivering on your pre-purchase promises? It's hard to say fast. That's the three main questions you need to ask yourself. Let's get into a little bit more in depth. So here are the key pillars behind the adoption phase, okay? Number one, can I use my product immediately? Is there anything broken with it? A good example of that is take a lesson from Apple. Apple, back if you go back to you know, 1980, 1990, we used to buy up electronics and we had to go and search for batteries and nothing worse than having a product right there or having a toy car or something where you had to go search for batteries and then you never have the batteries you need. I do that all the time with my remotes. I never have AAA batteries, but I need them more, more often than ever. So that's the worst feeling. Apple said, we're going to pre-charge our phones. So the minute you get the phone, you can unlock the value immediately once you unbox it. That's exactly it. Can I use my product immediately? Can I get value straight away? You also need to talk about what do, what do I do if something is missing? If I can't use it right away, right? Do I have all the information I need? 23andMe is a great example of this as well. I learned some of this from um, uh, Never Lose a Customer Again. It's a great book to read. Um, 23andMe sends a couple swabs. Have you ever done a swab for genetic testing or anything like that? You can. They'll send you one. And in case you mess up on that one, which I have, I'm sure, they send you another one so you could do the process again. Therefore, you don't have to have any friction and send it back, be denied, try it again, no friction. So if something's missing or broken, 23andMe says, we'll send you two just so you have it. Beautiful. That's, part of, that's an amazing example of adoption. Is customer service on the same page? Is that handoff being seamless? That's really what you want to know, right? Do you own the education process? Are you helping customers go and stay in your eco ecosystem or are you letting them go onto the wild west of YouTube and find someone else's content and let them be the expert, right? You want to own that. You want to take the customer to that. You want to own the next step, guide them to the next step and make sure that they're staying within your ecosystem and taking them by the hand, you know, digitally speaking. 
And then also you want to unbox some shock and awe. You want to make sure that it's a memorable unboxing experience. They're getting the product. They have this euphoric feeling, an emotional high, and you want to make sure that that's also going really well and positioning your brand for success. Give them a taste of what's to come. So if I'm running out the adoption phase using email and SMS, here are the touches I use to really show that we're adopting the customer. You can see some examples on the screen right there. So number one, post-purchase survey. I invite users to share feedback. Get them involved right away. A post-purchase thank you, super important. A note of thanks personalized to them is, is also equally valuable. If I bought a Sony A6400, which I did buy the other day, um, I will get a letter of thank you from, from the team, from the brand saying, thank you for your purchase of your Sony. There's so much you could do with this mirrorless camera. Here are the applications you should think about. We just appreciate your business, yada, yada, all that stuff. Personalized, that's the magic. An email or a text that says, let's unbox together what to expect in the box, what's inside, what can they expect to receive when the order is delivered. An SMS check-in text, the minute there's, there's technology, I mean, most shipping um, apps can do this, that when the minute that a box is delivered, I have gotten half hour later or 10 minutes later, a text or an email that says, guess what? How was the delivery process? Was it amazing? Here's what you need to know when you unbox your product. Another great way to adopt is that we all know when you get a camera, the one thing that we're going to do is try to take a picture. So we started sending out content that was centered around that first shot. We don't, we know no one's going to dive into the technical specs. We know no one's going to dive into the turning it on and figuring out every single nuance of it. But we know that people will try to take a shot, right? So we have content directed out their first shot. That was number one. We had a camera concierge that was introduced. And, and I've done this at some of the other top uh, consumer electronics retailers as well. A camera concierge where you say like, okay, you're buying some technology. You probably need some help figuring out every single possible opportunity from it. That was another message. A concierge text checked in, inviting dialogue on, on SMS or a phone call. Join a creator community. Bring them into your community. Bring them into like, hey, you've just got this product. There's a whole bunch of people just like you who got this product as well. And we also did a quasi upsell, right, where you trade in your old gear. Take that box, put your old camera in it, send it back out. You may be, you may be entitled to some cash. So those are the touches you can have in the adoption phase. It just gets the customer aware you're trying to help them achieve their goals. You're trying to help them. No one buys a camera unless they want to create content. So you want to help them create content. You don't just want to help them use the camera, right? That's the goal. The adoption phase, recognize their goals, get buy-in from the customer, make sure you've delivered on your commitments, and you're taking them to that next level. Here's some examples as well, aside from um, what, what, you, what I showed you before. Right, Umbra, doing it really well. Turns out you're even more awesome than you thought. That's a post-purchase thank you letter. Here's the one from Allergy Buyers Club where they have this quiet, pure whisper. And underneath it, it's like, here's how you'd use it. Setting this up, what you need to do, how to clean it, everything like that. Adoption. It's all the adoption phase. Here's what you do. Okay. Fiorelli, right here. It's like, we're so thankful you have your purchase. Join our community now. That's super important. Could get them into the community. Harry's, here's how to shave. I could probably use it right now. Here's how to shave and, and uh, use our products right out of the box. That's all part of the adoption phase that you as a brand need to excel in. Because if you're not excelling in that area, you can't expect them to, you can't expect to upsell or cross sell them. Let's talk a little bit about the action items now. What are the main things your brand can do to start implementing the adoption phase? So start with creating a transactional style email, very similar to what you see over here, right? Include the purchase products in there. You want to add customer service links. So someone could click on the link there. It says call now. If you, Some people want to have a call. Some people want to email. Some people prefer a chat or a text. Have those links in your post-purchase thank you email, in your post-purchase adoption emails. Not just your order confirmation, if it even is there, but also in your marketing emails, right? That post-purchase stage. Have one or two pieces of content related to what they bought. You can see right here, if I bought a camera, I'm going to have a piece of content related to here's how to create your first shot, right? A video, an article. And if you don't have that piece of content, create it. So take the time to create it. Include product FAQs within your adoption emails. Here are the top three questions people ask after they buy a product like this. 
and here are the answers, okay? And create multiple touches of it. You don't have to do it all in one big email. Sometimes it's worth it to do in one big email because um, I'll tell you why, because sometimes when people click on different points of the email, you can trigger an automation from where they clicked. So if I see someone clicking on videos all the time, I'm going to send them more video content as opposed to someone clicking on articles. I'm going to get more article content. So that's a little bit of a bigger plan. But right now, thank you email, unboxing email, and a content piece. Start with those three touches in your adoption phase. You'll see a world of difference. Because And again, cordon them off from every other email out there. No campaigns, no nothing. You're all here to nurture them. You're not just excluded. Just because there are four phases doesn't mean you can't put in some upsell elements at the bottom of your email. It just shouldn't be the primary focus of your message, right? So in retention stage, you invite you can invite uh, another cus the customer to create an account. You can show them recommendations of products similar to what you bought or invite them to join other channels. So that's some of the adoption phase areas right there. So these are the action items you should be rolling out right now after this webinar. Jump on it and say, if I can excel in the adoption phase, you're off to a You've really, you've really excelled in phase one. Let's talk about phase two of our post-purchase hourglass playbook strategy for e-commerce brands, and that is the retention phase. The most important part of this phase is, cust know this, customers can buy anywhere. They can buy your products pretty much anywhere. You need to show them why they made the right choice cho choosing you. You also need to say, are you helping their customer achieve their goals? right? This is where education and content comes into play. And the final part is, have you brought them into your community? The customer, when they buy an item, they probably unlock, unlock multiple value points that they may not even know about. And this is where you have a chance to say, guess what? Your purchase unlocked X, Y, and Z. We know we sent you ABC, but you also have X, Y, and Z available to you. That keeps them coming, right? It's that shock and awe. It's like, wow, I didn't know I had that. That's amazing. Great. Let's get started. So that's the point of the retention phase. Keep them imbued in your brand. You want to focus on helping customers achieve their goals. Again, no one buys a camera to put it in a box to just learn the technical specs. They buy it to create content. You need to guide them by the hands and make sure that they're creating content. It's the same with apparel. If I'm buying a shirt, I want to look good in different outfits. I want to have a, a shirt that I can wear it to work and I wear it to casual, right? Nimble. I want to, if I'm buying a, a bike, I want to stay more fit and feel more healthy. You need to know what that end goal is and hand hold them across the finish line because you're going to celebrate together in a minute. So surprise them with more value. Their purchase unlocked rewards or maybe they unlocked an in-store offer or maybe they unlocked um, some extra benefit that they may not know about. Share that with them. That's part of this retention phase. Bring customers into the community. Customers are less likely to leave a brand, less likely to leave a community than they are to leave a brand. If you bring them into the community of peers, join our Facebook group, join our Instagram, um, share a post on Instagram, right? Join this special tribe we have over here, join our Insta in-store club. That brings them into a community. People won't leave a community, right? It's really important to know. Over-deliver on education. Education builds rapport, selling breaks it. Get customers to commit to the relationship. That's really important. How can you get them to digitally commit to the relationship? It's by creating an account, join the rewards program, or join them on social media, right? All these areas are getting buy-in from the customer that says, I am, I got the product. You've really helped me kind of maximize, you've really helped me achieve, you know, know that the product was successful. Now I want to have a, a bigger relationship. And then finally, the other thing is treat them like a true VIP. Treat them like as if they are a customer who you really want to grow with them. And really, really you do. If you're doing it right, you really want to grow with that customer overall and celebrate that achievement of the goal together. So here's how we rolled out the retention phase in general. Look at all your value. There's so much value you have. You could join our VIP program. If you join our VIP program, there's a free version and a paid version. Most people got into the paid version because there was a lot of extra value in that. More personalized videos and content to help them achieve the goal. You took your first shot. Now you can do this with your camera. And now you can do that with your camera. Now you can do this with your product. Now you can do even more stuff. And here's how you do it, right? Tutorials. We give intro offers to sister brands, brands out there that 
you know, you may not have heard about, but they're related to our brands. We all have relationships with different brands that we think would be a good synergistic um, offer. So have that front and center as an unlocked value. That's all this part of retention. You can't get that anywhere else. Rewards points, SMS, send them a text message. You got reward points from your purchase. Did you know that? Sign in to claim them. Local in-store benefits. You can say, come into the store for an extra value. Get a free gift when you come into the store. Bring your camera in for a free cleaning. Bring this in for whatever it may be. You've unlocked value there. You can invite customers to a virtual event. Maybe there's a training event that you say, I want them to know how to use this product. I want them to, to network with, um, and I'm going to show you in a second, all these people who are very big fans of T-shirts or big fans of, of apparel or big fans of bikes. Invite them into the community. Join them on a virtual event or a live event. Join a Facebook group. Same thing. Community like-minded people that they can dialogue with. People will, brand, uh, customers will not leave a community as fast as they'll leave a brand. And then create an account. More first-party data helps them and you. So have them create an account, gets them more involved and raises their hand and says, I want to have a relationship with your brand a little more in depth than that one-time buyer. All these are part of retention. It's it's positioning yourself to, to be that, um, how can we as a brand we know you could buy this product anywhere. Anywhere, How can us as a brand help you achieve your goals, right? That's that's how you position the retention phase. And you can see here, here's some great examples. Starbucks does the same thing. The minute you download their app, you can join their rewards program, right? It's not just about a coffee. Join their rewards program. And then you have all this you know, magic stuff coming out. Buy nine coffees, get 10 free, 10 free, you name it. All these reward double points coming out. Um, Animoto does this... Uh, content where you do this whole kind of like masterclass tutorial, like step by step by step. Here's how you create this. You could have 30 days of content going out of here's how you create your first project. And here's how you come to like getting it, you know, bought by someone, right? All these phases are important in the retention phase. Sephora has a beauty pass where you can, you know, rewards program that they can just sign up and join and unlocks all this value they customers may not have known about. Me undies right here has this one where it says like, join our crew on social media of what did they say? It says community of like-minded undie lovers. Okay. Pretty cool stuff. You can join the community and that kind of brings in that value, keeps them understanding that you've transcended beyond the product and you've now become a brand. You've now been become part of their community that's interested in helping them grow as a creator, as a customer. So now let's, let's dive into some of the retention action items for you guys to build out right now, which are number one, create the journey for them. Okay, what journey do you want them to take? How long until they accomplish their goals? Okay, if they bought a shirt and they want to use it for a job interview or use it for a, a wedding or use it for a special occasion or just because, how long until they see the value in it and accomplish it, right? How long will it take for them to size them? How long will it take for them to clean it, to wash it, to care for it? Do they need to do this? Do they need to do that? What's the extra rewards I need? Map that value out for us for, you know, in terms of tech, uh, consumer electronics, sometimes that could be a long time because creating you know, technology has a lot of different moving parts. You need to be able to grow with them and say, what do they want to achieve? And just ask them, if what type of photographer are you? What type of content creator are you? All these elements allow you to kind of have different paths. Map out your value propositions. What type of value do you have to offer that beats the competitors? You'd be surprised. You probably have a lot. Rank them by highest priority and then ensure the lowest friction options go first. So if it's very low friction for someone to join, subscribe to YouTube, do that. If it's high friction for them to create an account, well, you should probably work on making it low friction, but don't do that as a highest priority. Focus on the ones that get the lowest friction buy-in that says the customer wants to have their relationship with you. Add additional onboarding content to every touch you send out. Here's a SMS about this new um, content piece just got posted that's relevant to your product. Or this email has all the video tutorials you need for mirrorless cameras. Whatever it may be, that's all this onboarding content. you got to roll it out bit by bit by bit. And then, like I said before, create SMS automations to ask for feedback. How was your experience? How are we doing so far? Are you using your camera really well? Get that conversation going. Use that conversation to feed it back to your content team, feed it back to your customer service team so they can be prepared to pass it off in the right way. You learn from it. You can then add these questions, add these pain points, add these solutions into your adoption phase, okay? That's with the value of it. 
and create multiple touches whenever you're doing this retention phase portion of your post-purchase strategy. Join rewards, that's touch one. Touch two, enter our community, join our Facebook group, join our online chat, whatever it may be. Subscribe to YouTube could be another one. So all these retention phases allow you to have a, a great community for the customer that customer to experience and unlock the value of their product. If you, you could also add some elements of the next phase, which is expansion, which is get customers to add more channels. The more channels you can communicate with that customer on, the better, the highest, the higher likelihood you will to keep them for a long time, right? If they're a subscriber on YouTube and subscribe on a uh, fan on Instagram and follow you on TikTok, well, and they bought a product, you have a higher propensity of closing that customer for a second time than someone who just buys once and, and done, right? Same with if they bought in-store and online you have a chance for them to buy more times than just the online buyer. So really have that focused. And then eventually you can retarget off of clicks. If they're clicking on a certain area, such as um, videos, right? You can retarget more videos to that person. And at the end, you can add some recommendations too, to kind of, you know, there's no need to not sell them. You don't need to not be upselling cross line. It's just not the primary focus of this phase. You're not going to see as the best results from um, upselling them yet until you show the value. Till you say, this customer wants to have a relationship with us. So that's the retention phase. That's So we solved adoption and we did retention. Now is the next phase, which is expansion, right? This is the phase where you as a brand have enough trust with, from the, with the customer that says, the equipment I'm about to show you, the stuff I'm about to give you or accessorize will help you get the max value from your products, okay? That's the, that's the goal of this phase. It's also, how can you get more customers into more mediums, into more channels, right? And then how will you use those channels to increase the lifetime value of that customer? All that is happening during the expansion phase. You can't upsell a customer or try to get them to build, you know, buy more until you've proven that the, they've adopted the product and they've adopted the brand, right? And that they've retained you, that they've raised their hand and said, I want to have a relationship. Your upsell and cross-sell won't work. They will not get a credit card. They will not join your rewards program. They will not follow you. So you need to excel in the first two phases to make this one really, really high value and really impactful. So here are the key pillars to keep, keep, into mind, keep in mind with the expansion phase. Number one, maximize their purchase, okay? Most customers, as I said before, only adopt 80% of the product potential, at least the technology. Again, that's, that's the example here. Um, close that gap. Close that gap. Of course, if you buy a T-shirt or you buy a bike, same thing. You want to make sure you're caring for the bike, seeing the long-term value of that bike, not just having to trade in a new one for another year. See a long-term value of it, right? That's really the key behind it. A shirt, maybe there's more value, like a lookbook. Maybe there's different styles you can have from that shirt. Did you know that you can do this and have an even better looking shirt? Maybe you iron it, whatever it may be. All these help maximize their purchase. You got permission to recommend stuff, right? You've helped them adopt the purchase and you've built trust now. So that's a good pillar to know that you've achieved, you've climbed that hurdle. You can now expand them into new mediums, right? Go beyond simply selling and focus on more ways to build a relationship across different channels, omni-channel, multi-channel. Look at your data. It, the more channels a person is subscribed to, the higher propensity they are to spend more with you. Let your community sell for you. You spent the retention phase focusing on getting customers to join your community. So let the community sell for you, right? Let your content creators in your group or let the people in your group or the influencers in your network say, ah, oh, I have this one product, but I found the most value by getting these additional items or the most value when I signed up for this rewards program or the most value when I did this, right? Or let the community sell for you. That's why you invited them there, okay? You can, you can ask the community, hey, whenever a new customer joins, whenever a new person joins, do this and we'll incentivize you, okay? Easy way. And track what works best. There's so many different touch points here. No, and let's say if I have someone join my YouTube channel, that means more value to me than someone that creates an account, okay? Think about it, or maybe the other way, right? So just track it and see what works best and then roll out your touches in the expansion phase accordingly. Here's a few samples of the expansion phase email touches that we've run out. Sample them, obviously recommend accessories. We all know what those are, right? Accessories for the product you've bought. Warranties and gear protection. Here's some of the areas where you could buy a warranty. That's an upsell, 
you know, protect your gear. That's an upsell. VIP paid premium subscriptions. See right here, you get a VIP 360 gift at another brand. That's an upsell. Spend 100 bucks there. You get $10 off, whatever it may be. Trade in your gear for cash, right? Another upsell opportunity. We get the gear. We can resell it, refurbish it, and resell it. That's good value for us and them. Credit cards and financing. Join our credit card program, right? That's a great way to know that they've already have credit to spend and they want to spend it with you. Proof. Product rentals, try before you buy. This is great for replenishment too. Replenishment, you can say, you know what? We got you got this one product. Try this product with a bundle. And get the bundle. And we'll save on the bundle. We'll give you an exclusive coupon code to try the bundle. And they buy again. And they want to expand the number of products. These go right well together. Omni channel. Get online buyers to buy in store as well. So get buy online pickup and store options, curbside pickup offers. All those are really important to do in the expansion phase. Here's a couple examples right here. Ralph Lauren, complete the look, right? You bought a shirt, you bought a jacket, you bought a vest, you bought a pants. Complete the look of that one shirt by getting different colors or different styles. Whenever I buy a t-shirt, I tend to buy multiple ones, right? If I like the way it looks and I I'm, enjoy that first you know, purchase, I'll buy more of them because I know it's a good fit. I just need more. Complete your look from Adidas. You bought this pair, this jumpsuit or whatever it may be. These go well with it. Athena Club, accessorize your routine, right? Exactly what we said before. You want to make sure that you're buying one product and that you have a, maybe a bundle where they can buy more items that are related that go really well with your routine. So let's talk a little bit about the action items for the expansion phase that you should take away. Okay, number one, map out all the expansion options. What are all the options you have available to you? Products, upsells, cross-sell, credit card, financing, trade-in, bundles, up, you know, replenishment. Map them all out. Personalize everything. You want to personalize everything you're saying to them to the product they bought before, right? So if I bought a camera, I need to see more accessories. I need to see more lenses. I should see more um, cables. I should see more memory cards. I shouldn't see another camera because I just bought the camera, right? That's where you really need to uh, test that out. You need to make sure that you have more content, right? Give them ideas. This camera goes well with this because here's what happens when you do that, right? The lighting, you have better lighting, better accessories, better setup. This shirt goes really well with this jacket and this pair of pants because, you know, some celebrity is wearing them. Have that style, have that, have that vision. Use different algorithms, wisdom of the crowd, curated products versus dynamic products. Pick the products yourself or have it dynamic. Tell them why this upsell matters to them. Get social proof in that in those emails that says this creator created this content this creator shot this picture um, using this gear right and because they use this gear they got a better shot i got up so when i was saying yeah i bought my camera i want to have a good experience for my for my uh, webinars for my podcast so i have to buy the lighting i have to buy all these products i got to buy the microphone all these things accessorize my main purchase which is which is the camera add that social proof as i said before and then create multiple touches as always right so touch one accessories touch two Use your rewards. You got rewards to use. That's an upsell. If they use the rewards, they'll buy another product. In-store offer, right? Get them to do something else. So apply this to your brand and say, what can I do to expand the customer to maximize their previous purchase? That's the most important part. And then at the very bottom of these emails, again, you can start kind of segueing into your next phase, which is the advocacy phase. Advocacy phase. Leave a review, refer a friend, social proof. All of that is in the expansion phase. So number one, we did the adoption. They got the product. They bought into the product. They've seen value from the product. Number two, you've done the retention phase. They've seen value from your brand, not just the product, from your brand, from your community, which is great. Number three, you've expanded them and maximized their purchase and maximized their experience and shown that you want to grow with them. Now we're coming to the last phase, advocacy phase. So the last phase advocacy phase of the post-purchase hourglass playbook strategy is how do you get them to give back, right? And they've unlocked value. How do you get them to tap into their goodwill and give back to the community, to the brand that they, that they love, that they fell in love with? You've delivered product, you've delivered value, you've helped them hit their goal. Now you ask to give back. You want to turn them into a raving fan, an ambassador for you, and you want to share why this is important for them. Right. Well, this is important for the community that they joined, because that's really important for them to know that you're not just doing it because 
we asked you, we're doing it because it's giving back and the community needs it. And the next person that comes down the line sees you as an expert. So let's dive into the pillars behind the advocacy phase, which is number one, you want to incentivize the review. You want to give them credit and appreciation for giving feedback. Okay. That feedback is really important. It's not always um, a given that they can just share their feedback, incentivize them, make customers feel obligated, right? Again, they join the community for a reason, not just for their value. They got value, but now the community wants to hear from them too. Identify the best type of review. Is it a video testimonial? Is it an IG post? Is it a PDP review on, on the product detail page? Is it a Google review? What is the best place where you would like to get a review that has the most value to you and most value to future customers? Celebrate together. This isn't just a win for them. It's a win for you both. You've achieved the goal together. Send a celebration email. I'm so glad you did this. I'm so glad we, let, we hit that goal. Now share what that meant to you, right? And just give them the link to go back and share. Don't ask too early, right? That's why there's a reason this phase is so, is it towards the back? You don't want to ask too early. You want to know the right time when the customer will hit the goal. Great example of that is, um, again, let's use an example of, of cameras. It takes a little while for me to adopt the camera and take my first picture that's really high quality. So that review period could come 30 days after. If I ask for the review at day 14, that probably get ignored, right? So that's not something you really want. So don't ask too early. Ask at the right time, whereas for a shirt or skincare, it, that window may be shorter. So know the right time to ask and do it do it smart. Don't over ask though, right? A couple requests should be enough. Don't don't over ask the, 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 the re review or the refer a friend. Just ask at the right time. And you finally, this is a big one, hedge against the bad reviews, right? Map out a plan to get in front of a bad review. If you have this, if you suspect that this customer is not going to give a good review, um, neutral is one thing, but bad review, get in front of it. Just map out a plan says, okay, my first email will be like, are you getting value? And if they click a, 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 a frowning face, well, then you maybe call them or something like that. So map that out, map that plan out. Here's how we did it. Here's some of the examples of this. And that's that, um, you know, we gave a gift card. If you left a review right there, um, just requesting a standard product review. You can ask them to rate your store in Google My Business. That's what's one thing we did also. Social review, you can have a good visual of a product. What does that product do? Do you take a shot with it? What does the shot look like? Show me the camera on your desk, whatever it may be. Have a good visual. You can use that in ads. You can use them whatever you want. Q&A requests, ask them to, can you, do you mind being part of the community that answers questions for customers that maybe want it, right? So get the customers to be part of the community through expert Q&A. Create a hashtag with products and pictures that a customer could tag on Instagram, TikTok, Net Promoter Score Survey, ask a simple couple questions for NPS, help improve that. Not many brands use that as much, but maybe the bigger brands use that, but maybe the smaller brands don't as much, but good idea to kind of tap into. Shopping experience, ask them again, hey, you didn't leave a survey for the shopping experience, mind telling us how we did there. And also sometimes you may need a case study, right? Use your best customers, the ones that are buying two, three, four, five times, not just the one-time buyers, but two, three, four, five, hey, can you do a case study? Clearly you're a huge fan and you love our stuff and you love everything we represent. Can you do a case study so I can run it as a Facebook ad, right? That's a great example of leaving, of asking a request beyond just a one-time buyer. Here's another few examples here. One from Bellroy, settled in yet? Tell them us, right? That's perfect because now you got the product, you got it, have you used it? Amazing. I think you got it at the time. How much did you like it? Leave a review. Give some, get some, refer a friend. Tell friends about it. You can't ask them to refer a friend if they don't even have the product yet or they're not having good value from it. That's worse. They'll refer a friend away. Then we another one here, we want to hear from you and give you 50% off when you leave a review. Review and share. Get $5 off any order when you leave a review. Incentivize the review, right? Take the time out. Say, your review means more to me because you're giving back and I'm going to give to you. So let's get into the action items. Hopefully we'll stick to time here. We're a little over time, but we're going to make it work. So advocacy, some of the action items you want to do in the advocacy phase are set a time when you hit, when you expect the customer's goal to be hit, right? You need to map it out. Will the customer hit their goal that they want to achieve by buying my product at this at period X or Y or Z, right? Map that out. Send the review email around that time. Create an incentive for reviews, $5 coupon code, $10 gift card, something, Anything they could use right away, I found a gift card could be pretty good because they can only redeem it at your store and the breakage rate is, is pretty high, 
you know, not many people redeem it. It's 10 bucks. Create a hashtag to, hashtag to track social proof so they can see what they're posting on Instagram. Map out a product-specific template, as you can see right there. Product-specific, one easy to click, easy to understand what you're asking them to review. Send two review solicitation emails, maybe go to three, but two is probably more than enough. Ask them to refer a friend twice, maybe. That's about it. And then create an automation that lets customer service call a customer who had a bad experience. So if someone left the review right here, and said, I had a one star, leave a review. That should be flagged. Don't put it up on the site, but tell customer service to call them and say, why was it a bad experience? What can we do to help get you to a five stars, right? That's an important part of it. Create multiple touches as well. Leave a review, share your win on social, refer a friend, kind of make the experience very seamless and kind of don't just kind of reiterate the same thing over and over again. Get them to think about, hey, I need to be part of my community, and do, I do that by advocating for you. Keep accessorizing in these emails. Use your reviews offer on this these deals to maximize your purchase. That's how you get them to be a lifetime buyer. Get them to buy a few more times based on what they bought in the past. And again, the refer a friend is another great expansion opportunity because you could do $5 for you, $5 for a friend. All these are great options for your brand to start not just gain, turning customers into advocates, but helping upsell them more and more. And again, the minute they will go from one to two, the amount of friction, the, the chances of them going from two to three grow exponentially. So let me go through a really quick workflow here just to make sure we stick to time here. Um, this is a really quick glance of the workflow. You have, this is just an example. Again, this is just an example. You just got to use it for your own brand. But let's say, you know, the minute you come on, you do your onboarding email. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Wait two days. Then you do your unboxing email. So here's the value you just got in your box. As you unbox it, do this. Um, here's what you need to know when you turn on the product. Wait another two days, join the community. Wait another three days, start the education process. Here's what you should do to maximize the value. Here's what you need to do to achieve the goal. Maybe talk about rewards in touch number five. Wait another few days, expansion time. Start trying to see, try to see them, hey, guess what? You know your product, we're educating you. You're realizing that you need to do more with it. So expansion kicks in. Wait a couple more days, do another upsell, cross-sell. Wait a few more days and then leave a review. Turn them into advocates. So that window you know, changes depending on your product. And that's the goal of, the, of our strategy, which is, yeah, this may work for your top products, but what you want to do in order to, duplicate this for other products and other customers and other types of um, bundles that people may buy. Just, you know, all you have to do is really toggle the, the wait periods. So that's what it comes down to. It's just a sample workflow. Glad to share with you a deeper um, workflow that we roll out as well. Um, just email me, Isaac, highflightdigital.com. So now that we dove into the post-purchase hourglass playbook, I'm, not, I'm just going to go through this pretty quickly because, again, we're not here to talk about High Flyer Digital. We're here to talk about you guys and how to keep your customers loyal. I'm just going to go through a really quick case, case study here. Um, case study, great example. Using the post-purchase hourglass playbook, even the top brands went from, this is a billion-dollar brand, $2 billion retailer, from 6% of their email revenue. They were making $10 million in you know, Q4. Is this Q4? You know, it looks about Q4, um, 2021. And by the end of Q4 2022, they were making 14% of revenue from email. So you could see a huge jump just by keeping customers loyal and part of their community for a long time. That's about $20 million gain, right? Just by tapping into the value of their customers, unlocking the potential of their customers. Really huge wins there. And then another retailer right here, another brand, we didn't start with them in February. That's when they were about 12% of total revenue from their email program. Um, email and SMS, they were about $112,000 a month. By the end of May, because of this post-purchase strategy and getting the customers to unlock the potential, we went from 240 the next month, $240,000 a month, over $354,000 a month in 90 days. Okay, They went from 12% to 31% in 90 days. That's what you want to see when you roll out the post-purchase hourglass playbook. All these results are are just fantastic for a brand because they can create that profitable, predictable, sustainable revenue stream from their customers. And that is super important. And they kept customers coming back for more. It works for 10-figure brands to seven-figure brands. You name it. We have tons of case studies right there. It just works because it turns the, it builds a better customer relationship 
and lets customers know that you're not just here to sell them, you're here to grow with them. So we are a little over time right now, so I'm just gonna go through this quickly. Let's recap, right? Promises made, promises kept. So as we said before, we want you to take away at the end of this webinar to do the following. Number one, level the playing field with your competitors and then level up. So you've learned how the top brands think, why customers leave and never come back, the monetary importance of keeping customers loyal to your brand, and you've understood the funnel versus hourglass approach. Okay, number two, create an unbreakable relationship that turns one-time buyers into lifetime buyers. We've unpacked that too. We've unpacked the four key phases for keeping customers loyal and breaking into that two-time buyers phase and two to three and three to four. You've done a deep dive into each pillar's mindset so you know exactly how to shape it for your brand. You've examined the touches your brand can run out, such as touch one, reviews, touch three, touch two, referral, touch, no, no, no. You've showed how the top brands are doing it. That's exactly what I've showed you, how the top brands are doing it, how they're thinking about it. And all of those emails are in a, in a nurture series. And the third promise kept was you've learned how to unlock profitable, predictable, and sustainable profits from every customer, right? So you've gained a clear action items for you to research and act on from this webinar. I've shown you real outcomes and real case studies on how what, what happens when you roll out the post-purchase hourglass strategy. And I've explained how these can be automated to maximize customer experience and profits. Really important to know, you can turn this automation on right now for everyone, or you could turn it on for your best customers at 80-20, and then see what it does and iterate from there. So those are the three promises committed to, and I'm really happy we've achieved them on this webinar. So next step, always recommend, again, if you are serious about taking action, take action right now, right? Make that happen right now. Book a free audit and strategy session, okay? I will share with you on that audit how to roll out the post-purchase hourglass playbook for yourself, as well as give you a free audit. If, you are, if you're on Clavio, easier because we're experts in Clavio. If you're on another ESP, I'm an expert in there too. Um, I happen to know pretty much majority of the ESPs out there. I've ordered all of them. Jump on a free audit with us. We'll give you an ROI calculator to predict the potential that um, of your list, where you are now, where you could be, and kind of close that gap. A review of your coding, design, and personalization, a customer journey audit for you, campaign feedback and recommendations, how to improve on them. We're probably on your list right now. Automation ideas and strategies such as this post-purchase playbook. I'm going to review your retargeting experience, and all of that is just a 45-minute strategy session for you, valued at about $1,000, totally free. We want just help your brand compete to win in a crowded marketplace. So that's what happens. I invite you to jump on that strategy session. It's not a major waste of time at all. You're actually going to take action from this webinar instead of letting it just be consumed and never doing it. And as promised, I said I would give you that free Launchpad bundle. So here it is. You can go to highflyerdigital.com slash 2023 Launchpad. Get our Launchpad bundle. It's everything you need to really excel at retention. It's a free book. That free book I have right here, remember that? It's my masterclass, which is coming soon. I'm going to start up an RSVP list for that. It's almost done, almost ready to go, and we're going to get start uh, completing it. Free email cheat sheet, free e-commerce growth guide, free 12-month email SMS and CRM roadmap so you can know exactly where you're going, not just where you are now, but where you're going. Think 12, month, 12 months long free campaign calendar for 2023, top 10 automations guide and how to run them out, free email and SMS audit, which I talked about before. All of that is about a $5,000 value. I'm giving it away for free because you're on this webinar and I think it's important for you to level the playing field. Like I said, we're on a mission to help you compete to win with the top brands. And the way we do it is by sharing their strategies with you. So that's all available at highflyerdigital.com slash 2023 launchpad. That's all we got today. This post-purchase playbook was a little intense. It was even more overtime because we had so many takeaways, so many action items, and I really hope it was valuable for you. Remember, the way to beat a recession is with retention. you got to keep your customers loyal, got to keep them growing in value, unlocking the profits from them, creating a profitable, predictable, and sustainable revenue stream for your business. The way to do that is retention, okay, at the end of the day. So book that free audit. Get your free audit. Let experts from the top 1% audit your brand. We will share with you exactly what you're doing well, where there's room for improvement, and how to unlock that potential. I really hope this is helpful to you. 
I'm excited to see you guys roll this out. I'm excited to see your post-purchase um, experience. And if you have any questions, shoot me an email at Isaac at highflydigital.com. Glad to answer any of them. Um, I'm here to help at the end of the day. So thank you so much for joining us on this webinar. Super excited to see you on the next one. Catch you later. Have a great one.